Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Bakhshi. I am a graduate student at the University of New Mexico, and my advisor is Dr. Rajati. Uh, we have been working on uh, 3D printable cementitious materials throughout the last two and a half, three years. So, first thing is that we know that uh, concrete is a very brittle material and possess no or very low tensile strength. So, uh, we need some reinforcement techniques to improve the performance of the concrete. So, basically, we have uh, fiber reinforcement, which specifically here we, we talk about engineered cementitious composite, which has like a, between one to two percent amount of fibers. And we have pre-install pre reinforcement, like rebar, that we use to connect the slab to the 3D printed walls. And we have the post-install reinforcement, such as uh, post-tension bridges. So when we started this project, we had a lot of problems with the different mix design. We play around with the different materials and admixtures. So we have been able to finally uh, come up with some mixes that they have like uh, enough uh, compressive strength that could pass like the primary studies. But after printing, we had some issues with the quality of the material. Since we had fibers, uh, it was not like very consistent filament. So, and then the other thing is that large content of fiber reduces the dimension stability of the 2D printed object. So we've been thinking how we can improve the, uh, the main question was to how to improve the quality of our filaments and like different mix design that we had. So we came up with the idea of using viscosity modifying agents, uh, which uh, since we had a lot of fibers, it helped us to improve the quality of the print that we had. So eventually, uh, we have been able to print like a very high quality uh, objects with the material that we had. So in the first phase, uh, we had we used like a different like simple methods for uh, testing the rheology and fresh properties of the material that we had, and then we came up with the idea of like uh, doing some extrudability tests with printing a square and checking the quality of the filament that we have. And then we had the, like the buildability test, like simply just printing and stacking the layers of the material that we had to see how much deformation that we have. And then after that, uh, we made sure like everything is correct and we have the good quality. So the next step was to work on the uh, mechanical properties and hardened states of the material that we had. So uh, basically our project was, uh, funded by transit, and so we had to use somehow like local materials that was available in uh, New Mexico. And then in the same time, we wanted to have like, a, you know, diff try different types of fiber because we used PVA fibers for the first stage, so we tried to use like a different fiber, uh, type of fiber too. So basically these are the, all of the raw materials that we had for this study. We had cement, which was 50% of all, our, all of our mixed designs. We had uh, slag, silica film, uh, fly ash, and metakalin. And then you can see a picture of like two types of the fiber that we use, PVA and uh, PE. This is PVA and this is the PE fibers. The length is eight millimeters for both of them, but the diameter is different. and It is very important and I will explain like how it can affect the final result. Uh, so basically, we had like four primary mix design, 50% fly ash, 50% slag, 40% fly ash, and 10% silica fume. And the last one was 40% fly ash and 10% metakalin. And then we had like different types of fibers, PVA, PVA, and PE. So the first one was 1.5% uh, of the volume of the material was uh, PVA fiber. The second was like, again, PVA, but 2%. And the last one was PE, 2%. So uh, we have started, uh, what we, uh, the system that we use in the lab was a gantry system, which is very common. And it has some like limitations, but it works for the printing the small objects. Uh, so for the test that we had, uh, so basically, we had the compressive test, but we wanted to make sure we know the difference between the 3D printed and CAD sample. So we tried to uh, print like a larger slab or prism and then extract the small samples. And at the same time, we had like CAD samples too. So uh, we had like two types of the tests for uh, compressive strings. And we had like the uh, flexural test. We printed like a large slab and extracted the small samples and used that for the, our purposes. And then the last one was the 
dog bone test uh, or direct tensile test. So we printed like the, we had some problem with the, this test because you cannot really print a dog bone, it's very small. So uh, we lay down our uh, molds and just 3D print the main component, which is the middle part of the uh, sample that we had, as you can see over here. And then fill the rest of that with the material that we had, extra material. So this is very important uh, to use this method because the fiber orientation affects the result of uh, our study. So we wanted to minimize the effect of any random components. So we decided to 3D print that to have, keep the orientation of the uh, objects that we have. Uh, so this is the result of the compressive test that we had. So basically we have two uh, main parts, cast versus 2D printed, and 2% PVA versus 2% PE fibers. So as you can see, and we expected that is like dark, darker gray shows the uh, cast samples and uh, lighter gray shows the 3D printed. So cast samples had like the higher compressive strengths because you know, when you 3D print the samples, you're gonna have some air and void, so it uh, reduces the compressive strength. But when you, and then the main difference is that like we have 1.5% PVA. And here we have 2% 2 2 PVA and 2% PE. So by adding the material, adding the quantity of fibers and increasing the fiber quantity, you can see that the compressive strength improves, which is not Expected usually is opposite because you introduce more air with adding like more fibers. But uh, we could improve the compressive strengths, and so one of them, the S50, had like the f around like 82 megapascal compressive strength, which was like higher than what ex we expected. And so here, this is the result of our uh, direct tensile test. So we have like three columns. So this is like 1.5% PVA fibers, 2% uh, again PVA fibers, and the last one is 2% PE fibers. And then we have FA50, uh, the second row is FA, uh, FA40 MK10. So for uh, the first one, you can see like even the numbers are like, these are like the stress strain curve. And you can see like the strain of the PV sample, PE samples is like uh, from zero to 20, while uh, it is like between zero to four for PVA sample. So they are like very, very different. So the strain capacity of the, when we use PE for all of the samples, uh, then it's like some, a number between 10 to 12, while it is like between zero to three and a half, maybe four, the PV fiber. So switching from PVA to PE improves like the uh, stress and the strain capacity of our samples. So we have the same scenario for the, the second one. Again, you can see that uh, FA40, SF10, which is like 10% silica film, and the last one is S50. So you can see that like when you switch from 1.5% PVA to 2%, you can see a little improvement, and in the same time, you can see like much, much dramatic improvement in the uh, strain capacity and the stress of uh, the samples that we had when you switch to PE fiber. The other thing that you can notice that we have like that uh, strain hard hardening stage, which is common for ECC and multi multiple cracking, which we didn't have it that much in the PVA samples. So here, uh, this is a, a brief like uh, table that shows like all of the tensile uh, properties of the mixes that we had. So here we compared the PV, like the type of fibers, and here we are comparing the the mix design. So if we get like, if we consider FA50 that uh, as our reference mix, the uh, tensile ultimate tensile strength is 4.9. And so when we switch a part of that, a portion of that with metacalin, we can improve the ultimate tensile strength. And even when you switch that, like 10% of the fly, uh, fly ash with the silica fume, we can see a sudden uh, decrease in the ultimate tensile strength of sample. So in the same time, if we again consider the uh, FA50 as a reference mix, the strength capacity is 11%, 11.27. And again, when we switch to the metacalin, 
we don't see much improvement. But when you switch like, uh, to a combination of flesh and silica film, we can see improvement in the strength capacity of our samples. So here, this is the result of the flexural strength test. Again, we have the same scenario, 1.5% uh, PVA, 2% PVA, and 2% PE. Again, you can see like displacement, uh, which is from 0 to 5 for PVA sample, D4. And this is like, for PE, it is like between 0 to 16. So you can see like the, uh, in terms of load, ultimate load, and displacement, so both of the, the PVA fibers are like much stronger than PVA. Uh, again, we have the same scenario here, uh, but overall S50 uh, with 2% PE had like the, uh, I mean, very good performance in terms of the, uh, the ultimate uh, load and also displacement. And here, uh, this is a comparison between like the the samples that we had. So you can see we have mid-span deflection for flexural test, and we have the ultimate load. So you can see like uh, these four mixtures are PE-containing samples, uh, which had like the higher like ultimate load. And even for the deflection is the same scenario. And FA40 MK10, which is 40% meta uh, fly ash and 10% metacalin had like highest uh, uh, ultimate load capacity. So here is a just a brief uh, show of what's going on with the flexural test results. So you can see the pictures. Uh, even in pictures, you can see like the difference how it bends in flexural test. Why like PVA it couldn't like do much. The same scenario for S50 and FA40 SF10. Uh, this is uh, the last picture, like an X-ray picture of the sample that we had. So we can see like how just switching from PVA with the same length, it's not different, uh, to <coughs> PE can improve the, you know, the strain capacity of our samples. Uh, and then another picture to show like this, what is the size of the fibers that we are using uh, inside the mix is like very small. And the last thing is like just you know difference in physical properties of the PVA fibers, which are like thicker in diameter, uh, to smaller samples, which is PE fibers, which are like very thinner, uh, can improve the surface area. So we're gonna have like a better you know the connection between the a matrix and fiber is much higher, so you can't like improve the you know uh, tensile capacity of your sample with just switching from the PVA fibers to PE fibers. Uh, for conclusion, you know like PE fibers, like the, all of the samples that we had, like which we use PE, had like more than 10% like improving the strain capacity. Uh, we used like eight millimeters PVA fiber, which was not effective, but eight millimeters PE fiber was very effective. And we had like um, S50 with 2% PE fibers, which has like 15.8% strain capacity, which is like the highest that I've seen so far. In, yeah. Uh, that's it, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>